So now in this video, we're going to look at the IDSS of this J310. That's the part number. It's an N-channel JFET transistor, which means that uh, we have the drain up here, the source is the middle pin, and the gate is the bottom pin. Flat side is facing over here. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. There you can see flat side facing there. And we have the drain source and gate. So the gate controls how well the transistor conducts. When the gate is the same voltage, as you can see here, as the source, the transistor is conducting fully. And so we have positive here, we'll measure the current, we'll come there. There's n-type material that it flows through to uh, ground. So it does have some uh, resistance. It does limit current a bit. But uh, there's p-type material here, and so if you give a more negative charge to the gate than the source, by enough voltage it pinches off the current that can flow through it. And so we are going to look at this video the uh, maximum current that can go through it. So it is a bit dependent on voltage. So when I looked at the data sheet for this uh, particular component, the J310, the number it gave me was for uh, 10 volts power supply across it. So right now I have one volt across it right there and we're gonna have some extra beeping in this video so we're gonna set this to milliamps and I actually did start trying to film this earlier I'm reshooting I accidentally put it to microamps earlier and when I tried to measure this I had OL for out of limits but I don't think I damaged the meter but in any case especially when you're measuring current make sure you look at the setting very carefully so there we have 20 milliamps of current this is only at one volt though and so we will uh, to reduce the beeping I'll set the voltage measure the current now I set it to two volts and there we go I got a connection now you see it's 30 milliamps of current if I don't lose my connection there we go it's holding 30 milliamps of current and we'll measure the voltage and I think I finally got to uh, that's not the voltage I want to measure but it's the same so in any case there we go we got uh, two volts positive negative rail let's set this to three volts and so at 10 volts it claims a minimum of 24 so we got three volts there 24 milliamps and a maximum of 60 milliamps if there's 10 volts at the power supply so now we're going to measure current again and I did limit current from this power supply we got uh, looks like about 34 right there milliamps of current that's for 3 volts let's go to 4 and now we might have there we go we got 36 milliamps of current I think that is going to be the uh, current that we have up to even 10 volts so that was at uh, 4 volts let's increase it to 5 looks like a spec above 5 right there 5.1 and measure the current if it's still 36 we'll know that uh, we finally found the uh, IDSS there you go so it looks like it's a spec higher but the voltage was up a bit let's try six there we go six volts and we'll look at the current first since it's already set to that and yep that's the same amount of current and we can set the uh, voltage so looks like five volts we uh, got the uh, maximum current that's going to flow through here when it is fully conducting so it limits current let's go up to 10 volts that is what the data sheet gave the number for but it didn't give an exact number it gave a range of a minimum of 24 milliamps okay we're measuring voltage and uh, a maximum of 60 milliamps so just shy of uh, 10 volts close enough and it should still be about 37 milliamps of current and it looks like it goes down as the component heats up so there you go just went up a spec so voltage makes a difference and you can see the currents going down I think that's because the components heating up 
and apparently it becomes a worse conductor as it heats up. So that's probably the maximum power we want to put across it. This can handle higher voltages and stuff, but uh, since we're putting it directly across there and the current going through there, uh, it's limiting all the current by itself, absorbing all the power by itself, then the higher voltages may be for when there's other uh, components involved or you're limiting to lower current. So I'm going to end the test there. But uh, the main takeaway is you see IDSS when you study uh, JFET transistors and this is what it is. The current that it is going to limit when limit to when it is fully conducting. And there's some variables that affect that. Again, the data sheet gave me a range of uh, values, so it's not exact to begin with, at least with this particular component. But you see that number thrown around all the time. It's a good idea to know what it is. So hope that all made sense. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.